So in this next part of the Choose Grow series with Naomi Simpson, we're talking about the point on growing as a leader. Now, something I would like to start with is how do leaders focus on growing their skills and becoming a better role model to their team? So often a founder doesn't really think of themselves as a leader. They're so focused on their business. They might think of themselves as a business owner or they may be an entrepreneur and they'll have some labels that attach to themselves, not realising that number one job they have is to be a leader. And that is not just for them, clearly it's not for themselves, it's for about all of those people around them, not just their team members, but maybe stakeholders, community or other people of influence around them. And how they tell the story is really important. So the first thing to realise is, oh my goodness, I'm a leader yeah. and really own that. And there's a difference between leadership and management. So management is about nurturing the uniqueness of the individual for the good of the cause. Leadership is about uniting everybody with their unique skills for the good of the cause. So the role of leader is often about storytelling. It's about painting the picture. It's about showing people a better future. It's about the words they use to inspire people and bring them together on a journey. And I'm deliberately using that sort of language to show what it looks like. The role of leader also never goes away. And it's not about you. I remember once, I mean, years ago, when honestly I just didn't want to get out of bed. Like it was, I was sick of it. It was yeah. hard. And every time I touched something, it seemed to break. And um, Tim Pethick, who was the founder of Nudie Juice, um, said to me, he goes, being an entrepreneur is like being a clown punching bag. You get smacked in the face and you just have to get straight back up with a big smile on your face and keep going. And I said, well, what if I just don't want to get up? And yeah. he said, oh, I thought you were an entrepreneur. And so he kind of challenged me to it. And so it isn't about us. We have to remember why we're there and who we're serving, and we're doing it to make the world a better place. So that's where your purpose or your why becomes increasingly important. And invest in understanding what leadership is. The second thing that happened for me on the leadership journey was I realised I was not good at it. I just, it wasn't my natural thing, which I know probably surprises you. So I had to learn. I had to learn about myself. I had to understand my strengths. I had to understand the strengths of the people around me. But I also needed to keep learning as a business owner as many skills, which is why I was so excited when Airwallex asked me to do this series, because this is one way I can share my knowledge with mm. other people and they get to learn. So continue to learn, be deeply curious. The leader who stops being curious, stops growing, stops being leader. So first they need to identify, so as a business owner, first you need to identify that you are a leader, you're playing a leadership role in your business. It sounds like second is identifying that you're not great at everything. There's some things, and particularly as a new business owner, you're juggling so many different projects, wearing many different hats. Um, what are some areas, so marketing is obviously a key strength of yours and a key focus in the businesses that you work with. I, would, I think people would be very interested to hear what are some of the areas that you know personally are not your strength and you should actually not touch or get involved in as much as the marketing side perhaps. I'm very fortunate that, that Gemma Fastnage has been with me for all bar a few kind of a year and a half and she's the chief operating CIA. officer of the Big Red Group and she likes to say, I'm the detail in your devil. So, you know, I'm out there creating rainbows yeah. and doing all of those sorts of things. Well, she's there going... How on earth do we create rainbow? Because there needs to be somebody who's in the detail, and detail just is not my thing. So when I did my strengths um, finder, which is, you know, anybody can do online, and I found out that I am so much better out than in. You know, mm. I am my first one is woo, which is winning others over. So if I walk into a room of 100 people, I can hardly wait to have 100 new friends. Other people would rather die than, you know, be in a room of 100 strangers. So once you understand what your innate strengths are, then that helps you define your leadership contribution, your leadership role. And it's really important to also understand your non-strengths. 
and have somebody or people around you. And they don't all have to be team members. They might be a mm. friend who holds you to account. They might be a mentor. They might be an advisor. They might be, you know, a professional services person. You just, you never know. But you, you do need somebody who will hold you to account. The worst thing for a leader is when they stop listening and when they became like the emperor with new clothes and they honestly can't see themselves and they have this this real um, the real blindness to the impact they're having and on others. And, you know, some say I'm not self-aware at all, but I do always check in and kind of understand and I feel very fortunate I've got great people around me who go, really? You know, you're off on a tangent now. Well, that's not what we said we have got to do. Hold us to a strategy. Leaders also need to define strategy and they need to stay with it because one of the things with founders and innately with entrepreneurs, we're off to the next bright, shiny thing and that's really frustrating for people around us. You know, the next, the next, the next, the next. So, you know, systems and processes allow you to scale a business. That's why I like your products yeah. so much because they allow you to scale a business. And... So really making sure that you're working on the things and allowing people to do whole and complete work gives them a sense of accomplishment based on their strengths. I think that's really important. Yeah. So focus is definitely critical. And you also mentioned strategy, with, which I love. So when thinking about a strategy and leading a large organization, how do you think about, or working with founders, how do you think about the different time horizons for those strategies? Because you might have a plan for one year, but it might be very different for three or five years out. Um, how do you think about different time horizons when building a strategy with a founder? Yeah, time horizons are really important when it comes to building strategy. And there's different phases of a business as well. So when you kind of um, hand to mouth, one foot in front of the other, um, it really you can't think much beyond a quarter, a trimester at best, a whole year seems eternity. Yes. But as a business matures, you do really need to be looking out at least two years or three years because you get to design your future. And if you're not thinking about that, then you're really missing an opportunity. So, and that can be really, really challenging to imagine. So one of the practical elements for that for me was way back in the day, I literally wrote with the team, um, but I wrote this document which was just called a painted picture. And it was almost like a dreaming document. It's not a strategy. But often when you're in the daily grind, you cannot imagine what it would be like to serve. And, you know, I, I think of that first when I wrote 10,000, you know, customers. I'm like, what does someone do serve a day? Now? You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's it, the, the, the numbers now, I look at them and I kind of giggle. Yes. But that was a big dream. That yes. was a big deal. And I, I allowed ourselves to dream. And it opens you up. And when you dream, you think, gosh, what are the things that I'm going to need to help me get there? Who are the people? What, what relationships do I need to build? What networks do I need to build? What, what, what services do I need? And I think that's really, really important. Yeah, I like that idea of a painted picture. When you think about the various components of that, are you thinking... Are they always very business revenue orientated or do you include some other ones that might be more aspirational? No, it's designed to be fun, Yes. you know, and allow ourselves to have fun. Like yeah. nobody said that, you know, you couldn't have fun in business. No. And I think we do take it very seriously. This is a document for us and it often inspires new team members or community members. And don't underestimate the power of your community of, or, and you know, way back in the day, I didn't, we didn't even have social media, but you know, don't underestimate the power of a great story and other people being able to share it. And you know, one of the things I wrote in the document, like, like literally, it was more than a decade ago, yeah. so let's not count. Uh, <laughs> but I said, what would it be like if Qantas had the logo on the back of every single boarding cast? And about three years ago, we ran a campaign with them and it was. Yeah. So, you, you know, at the time it seemed highly, highly improbable, but it was possible. And that's the most important thing. It's, a, it's not a, oh, everybody on the planet will have an X, because that's, that's actually never going to happen. So what is probable and aspirational and also really going to push the energy? And I think energy is really important in, in a business of how you create that energy. That makes a lot of sense. I think in one of the previous sessions you spoke about the importance of rallying the team around a key goal or metric. And everyone in that business can be accountable in some shape or form to that metric as well. And what I love about the Qantas idea is in the same way, 
everyone can get behind the, the value of that and the importance of that in building uh, a brand that has a legacy and, and endures. So Naomi, what are some leadership principles that you really value and that have, have stayed with you throughout your journey as a, as a founder and entrepreneur? One is just to be kind. One of my really early leadership lessons was I realised I just don't know everything and uh, quite humbling as it was, but often we think we're the world's expert and, and that's not how you're going to grow, grow a business. Also that there is not one way, uh, there's many ways. You know, that's one of the great things about Shark Tank. You've got five of us all saying different things. We've all got a completely different approach of how we would tackle a particular business issue. And I think that's what was really lovely about the program is you could see that there's not one way to grow an enterprise. There's many ways to grow an enterprise. So I have my values. And I think being a leader with values and using those as your guiding post is really important. So, you know, just being kind, being really grateful, seeing people for who they are and honouring all of the differences and whatever that shows up. And inclusive is really, really important. And when I say inclusive, this is not a tick of the box. So, we, you know, we hear so much about diversity and inclusion. Well, diversity is you got an invitation to the party. Inclusion is you got an invitation to dance. So, you know, it's not about, oh gosh, look, we got all of this, this is amazing. No, it's about making sure that whatever you're doing is held in the time where people can be there. And that's all abilities, you know, people of disability, people of um, neurodiversity, all sorts of different diversity also means that people need to be able to work in the way that they can produce their best results. And I think as leaders, we need to really understand the importance of what inclusion really means. It's not about you do it the way I want you to do it. It's me asking the question, how is the best way for you to work to build the optimum outcome? And that's actually the role of a manager is nurturing the individual. But leaders need to understand that as they're designing strategy and as they're getting all the right pillars in place so that they're using the right people for the right job at the right time. That makes sense. And when working with different founders, do you, you mentioned kindness, inclusion is really important qualities. Are they qualities that you also look for in businesses that you invest or advise with? Are there other particular attributes that you look for? I, it's funny because on another episode of my podcast, somebody said, oh, why, why would you invest in a business? And obviously, mm. you know, Shark Tank, we're seeing hundreds and yep. hundreds of pitches. And actually, if I don't like them, why would I invest in them? You know, like life is short and we get to choose who we want to do business with. So alignment of values was really important to me when I, when I choose to invest um, in a business. And because I've, I've only got 24 hours in a day. And where I spend them is really, really important. And, and if it's hard, and the other thing is, are they prepared to listen? Like, I've been around a box. Why well, don't I know a few things? And it's fine if you don't, but then let's not work together. Mm. But if I can't contribute, then why am I here? Because it's not just about money. You can get money anywhere. Um, you know, so really, it's also about what comes with that money, which is my insight, understanding, and obviously 20 years of e-commerce. I know a few things. So, you know, let's not put lip service to that. So, and I want to be able to see that my contribution is creating value for our community. Again, why I'm doing this. It's because I don't know who's going to see this, who's going to hear me and say, oh my goodness, I didn't know that. I could try that. Let's give it a crack. You know, and so I don't know where this will end up, but that's why I choose to do it. And when you think about values um, and for new time founders, or maybe they've been in business for a few years or a decade, how can they either come up with the values that are important to them or revisit those values that are important to them as a leader over time? I really encourage people when they're thinking about their values to not just go and get a facilitator and write it up on a board and so forth. It takes observation. So if you're already in business, it's about writing the stories about what defines you. And so, for instance, if it's, oh, you know what, we always just make sure that everything is complete before we go home. Or, wow, that means you do what you say you're going to do. You finish work, you're completed. Oh, that's kind of integrity. So if you observe the stories, oh, we love having fun. We know that, you know, this is not brain surgery and blah, blah, blah. Oh, so it's okay to have fun in business. Oh, so 
And so I think if you observe the business, the stories, the values will pop up. The other thing is there doesn't need to be a lot. I've seen businesses who've got 10 and it becomes like this checklist. Mm -hmm. You know, one value or even two that people really attach to is very, very powerful. Um, we've tended to have five, um, but truly I think three is probably enough, especially for a smaller enterprise, which is one is we never let our teammates down. Like speak in real language, not, mm, you know, yeah. not kind of like consulting perspective. Yeah. 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 Something we've talked a little bit about is the importance of a story or having the story as a founder. How have you seen that best showed out with, with some of the founders that you work with? Oh, advice. not just the ones that I've worked yeah, with, sure. but the ones. So Melanie Perkins from Canva. Mm. Oh my goodness, when you hear her story and how they grew out of the business that they were in and into this and that deep sense of passion, you cannot help be engaged with putting design tools for everyone, like giving them to everybody. And you really feel that in their product. And there's so many different ways that founders can use stories. But, but you can't fake it until you make it. Don't just make a story up because it sounds, you know, like a good idea and I need a story. Really observe, observe yourself. The other thing is stories are used to engage your team and people around you. And obviously that's a critical role of leaders. But, um, you know, even how you describe your goal, your big hairy goal, but how you describe that and you tell the story about it. And stories always have emotional. Stories create emotional connection. And that's for every stakeholder, your team, your community, your suppliers. It doesn't matter. So tell the story. And don't be shy when people say, well, why have you got this business? I would just preface that because often founders will say, well, you know, I found that nobody did or I saw this problem, whereas there's this notion of the job you're being hired to do. And when you think about it as we have a job to do, Red Balloon has a gifting job to do, or Canva has a design job to do of making people look great. So when you think about the job, then it's easier to tell a story about it because you can create emotional connection. People just don't buy from you because maybe it is transactional. It might be social or it might be emotional. Don't try and cram it in. Keep it simple. It's like you're having a, you know, what do they say? The old pub test. <laughs> yeah. And something I've heard you talk about is, is the milkshake experiment and what, how that relates to the, the key job to be done. Could you share a little bit about what that milkshake experiment involved and how founders can start to think about that? Yeah. So it's, it's such a good story. And yes, I talk about it a bit. But the milkshake story is the fact that there was a quick service restaurant in the US. They wanted to increase the price. They wanted to increase the sale of milkshakes. Every time they ran a promotion, milkshake sales would go back to where they were. So they observe customer. So I think about customer obsession and understanding customer journey. They observe customer and they notice that customer, and do you notice how I use customer as singular? Mm. Because they're all individuals. Yeah. So not just customers, they observe customer individually. Each their own. Yeah, yeah, see what you do. And they noticed that customer was coming out uh, mid-morning, often um, by themselves. And so they asked them, what are you doing today? And they said, we've got a long commute in front of ourselves. And um, so why didn't you get a soda or a coffee? Oh, a soda goes too quickly. A coffee is too hot. The job, the milkshake is being hired to do. It's companionship. So when you understand the emotional job of what your product or business is there to do, then you can create the story around that. So understanding that, and we did a, that, that works within the realm of brand and leadership and that storytelling is really important. I like that a lot. In your partnership with Airwellix, something that we've spoken a lot about is how Airwellix helps to empower the next generation of leaders. Could you share a bit about why that's really important to you? Trust is really important in business and trust is really important for leaders and they have to be able to trust who they choose. Um, they've got to be able to choose a platform that's going to pay them on time and is going to be completely transparent and not all the platforms do. There's lots of hidden things and I was actually aghast, and I suppose I shouldn't name, but one of my Shark Tank businesses, been on air, mm. fabulous product, sales going through the roof, and they only had this particular platform uh, as their payments and that platform decided to turn them off because they thought something was going on. I was like, 
Do you never watch the television? Of course they're growing. You know, they, they, they're world famous in Australia. Yeah. And so for me, this is about trust. You just have to trust your suppliers. And money is so critically important. Cash, you know, we've heard it a thousand times, yeah. which is cash. So I understand I'm putting my name to this. Like I get this, you know, but I spent a lot of time understanding does this solve the problem for the small business, for the founder, so that they can trust and you will pass that cash where it needs to go? And as we know, it doesn't need to go into the bank account. It can go directly off to where it needs to go. And I think that's a very, very exciting thing, how you call down funds rather than necessarily. So, um, so it's probably because of the pain that I have seen caused elsewhere that I really had a good old look mm. and said, we have to support our founders with this notion of trust. We have to. Because they've got, a, they, they've got such a big job to do. They just need their money. And focus, right, as well. If they can, all the, the admin pieces and the various finance and setting up accounts and transferring trust. money on time. Focus is an outcome of oh, having exactly. trust. Yes. They're able to focus. They've got to be able to trust. I think we've covered a lot. We've talked about everything from storytelling as a leader to figuring out your values, to trust and authenticity as well, I think has been wrapped into a lot of this conversation. It's been great to speak with you, Naomi, on the topic of growing as a leader and look forward to more of the sessions that we have over this time. It's fun. Thank you.